Well, today we're going to start the video a little bit differently. Let's actually look at the thumbnail first, or basically one of the choices for the thumbnail that I currently have. And in this case, unfortunately, I had to rely on one of those AI tools to produce something ridiculous. Today we're discussing Jedi rodents. And well, basically, I got this, possibly this, or my favorite, this. Yeah, this one has a lightsaber. And the reason I wanted to start with these ridiculous pictures is because well, that's basically what the main scientist behind the paper we're discussing today named this somewhat unusual new discovery. He was actually studying rats and rat communication and came upon something really bizarre. And so, how wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to be discussing a relatively new study that essentially claims that rodents, and specifically certain types of rats, potentially use unusual powers to basically smell things better. Oh, the hero is actually pretty funny. It's almost like I used some kind of a Jedi power to make you watch the video. This is the video you want to watch. Anyway, it's a study by Eduardo Mercado and Jessica Juo with a simple title, Do Rodents Smell With Sound? But to try to understand their logic, let's I guess start in the beginning. In 1954, John Anderson, a professor in the Department of Zoology at Cornell, discovered that rats were able to emit extremely high-frequency sounds, ultrasonic sounds. It was reported in this paper, production of ultrasonic sounds by lab rats and other mammals. And at first, the hypothesis was that they were actually using these sounds kind of like bats. Or in essence, it was a type of a echolocation. And there were even several studies in the 50s and in the 60s supporting this idea. But over the years, additional experiments actually showed that this was probably not correct. And instead, this was a type of a vocalization, but usually a result of some kind of a physiological response or basically some kind of an emotional response, such as when the rats were under stress, with additional experiments suggesting that this was a kind of a social signal. And a social signal that was not exclusive to rats, but was also present in a lot of other rodents, and obviously bats as well. One example that's often given is a 40 kHz call that tiny rat pups will usually produce when they're left behind or when they're lost. And this will instantly trigger mother to go and search for them, retrieving them in the process. In other words, these 40 kHz frequencies seem to trigger a retrieval behavior. Or when they actually get super scared and freeze in terror, they start producing 22 kHz sounds, which also increases their heart rate and blood pressure and possibly acts as some kind of a warning sign. Although the actual explanations are very hypothetical. At this point, it's really unknown why they make these sounds. Likewise, 50 kHz calls seem to dramatically encourage social interaction and has been previously suggested to be related to positive mood. Very similar calls are also emitted when the rat is about to receive a reward or when it's anticipating something really positive. And so over the years, a lot of different sounds and different frequencies have been discovered between 20 and 100 kilohertz, and all of them seem to be produced in very specific situations. But compared to human vocalization, this USV or ultrasonic vocalization cannot be heard by most other animals. And so it was actually believed to be some kind of a social signal intended for their own species only. In some sense, scientists have even compared this to basically birds chirping, for example during courtship or other social interactions. But a few years ago, the main researcher behind the study, Dr. Mercado, was essentially invited to one of the meetings about these sounds and discovered unusual inconsistencies in the research. And his previous background in studying ultrasounds of humpback whales and specifically different whale songs, played a pretty big role in this recent discovery. And here he realized that a lot of this vocalization was actually extremely different from what we usually observe in whales, when they actually do socialize and talk to each other. He discovered that in many cases, after most of these ultrasound calls, these rats would also start sniffing around almost instantly. And we know that generally, rodents explore their environments by basically sniffing everything. They use their whiskers to touch things and then use their noses to smell everything near them. And so here, by monitoring vocalization mixed with this behavior, he discovered that it was potentially not actually related to social behavior or social vocalization, but was something entirely different. And here, he suggests it's actually connected to vibroacoustics. That's of course where our Jedi powers suddenly come in. And vibroacoustics refers to various ultrasonic vibrations that almost always cause particles to cluster and to move in certain ways. 
A typical example here is putting sand on some kind of a speaker and playing music and watching the sand suddenly assume certain shapes as it follows the vibrations. And similarly, vibroacoustics produced by these rats, especially in ultrasound frequencies, can actually cause various airborne particles to suddenly cluster, making things much easier to smell. And some of the previous research has actually demonstrated how you can use ultrasound to manipulate various particles. And so this idea of vibroacoustics being used by rats to smell things better is basically why he decided to refer to this as Jedi rodents. They're literally using their hidden force to try to sense things better around themselves. And so here they potentially create various clusters of particles such as pheromones, making it much easier for these rats to identify friends or to possibly discover certain types of food. Or maybe discover competitors, because this could also be connected to mating and social behavior. And though previous assumptions about this was that somehow these ultrasounds would encourage female rats to potentially mate with male rats, instead this actually seems to be a little bit different. It potentially helps male rats to smell nearby pheromones and to thus find their partners by using these unusual vibroacoustic powers. And if this hypothesis is correct, this is basically the first time ever we've seen anything like this. This has never been observed or even suspected to exist and could potentially lead to discoveries where we can actually use very similar techniques to manipulate various molecules or to increase the power of certain sensors. And so essentially by learning how to manipulate these nanoparticles and various molecules by using ultrasounds could lead us to new technologies or maybe even discoveries that we cannot even imagine yet. But for rats using this, and for researchers studying these rats, if this is confirmed, it can also mean that some of the previous research might have actually come to wrong conclusion based on the observations of these ultrasound vocalizations. And so basically, where the researchers thought rats are talking, they might have actually just been using this to smell things better instead. And so this could be the first ever discovery of so-called active olfactory sensor a new way to smell things by using sound. Definitely an intriguing proposition and something that led me into a rabbit hole where I basically created a bunch of really bizarre thumbnails, but something that I would really like to study more as more research comes out. And so until we understand this better, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all the links in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Jedi powers. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.